Hello everyone, in this video we are just going to learn how you can create user defined source file and header file in Keel Microvision IDE. Let's get started. So on the screen you can see a simple program which will print three different statements in my program. So this program contains two different functions. One is function 1, function 2 and inside the function 1 I am just printing from function 1 string along with new line at the end that is enter at the end. And in the function 2 I am just printing string from function to string along with new line at the end and inside the main function i am just calling the function 1 for printing this string in the debug viewer window again after the function 1 call i am just calling the function 2 for printing the string from function 2 on the debug viewer window and after these two calls i am just printing inside main string in my debug viewer window let us examine whether we are getting the same output as expected. I am just compiling this. You can see 0 errors and 0 warnings. I am just moving into the debug view of Keel Microvision IDE. You can see the debug viewer window is open. I am just running the program. So as per our expectation from function 1, from function 2, inside main has been printed in the debug viewer window. So the program is working as expected. So now I am just going to create my user defined source file and header file. So the common practice used by every engineer right over here is for every source file that you create, you just want to create an equivalent header file with the same name of the source file. So this main.c file is different. You just keep in mind that for every program we will be having a common main source file which will be containing the main function in your program which will be executed in the CPU. But other than this you can keep n number of user defined source files and header files in your program. You can include it in your program or you can exclude it in your program that is dependent on your use case. But for each source file that you create, you just want to create the equivalent header file with the same name of the source file. So I am just going to create my first source file. Just right click on the source group and click on add new item to group source group 1. And here I am just going to select .c since I am creating the source file and here provide the name for your source file in the name tab. So the name for the source file that I am going to give is user file 1 and as I said I am just going to create the header file equivalent for this source file. Again I am right clicking on the source group and clicking on add new item to group source group 1. And now I am just going to select header file and I am going to give the same name user file 1 and I am going to add it. So this is the common practice among every embedded engineer right over here. So keep in mind for every source file just create the header file required. So the practice is sim very very simple. The source files right over here will be containing the definition of variables and definition of functions related to that source file. But the header files right over here. will be containing the declaration of variables and declaration of functions related to that source file. 
So all the declarations we will be doing inside this header file and all the definitions of variables and functions we will be writing down in this .c file right over here that is the source file right over here. So .h file will be containing the declaration of variables and functions and .c file will be containing the definition of variables and functions. And whenever you write down your user defined header file you just want to add the header god. So this header god will be useful for avoiding the read declaration of variables and functions that you are declaring right over here inside this .h file. So just keep it a practice that for every header file that you are writing you just want to add a particular and unique header god for that file. So this is the common syntax as if and def of you can give whatever name here you want but you should not reuse this name this name must be unique if not defined of user underscore file one underscore h underscore i am just going to define this and at the end of the file i am just going to add endif so for now you don't need to bother about what is this keep in mind that for every header file you just want to check this condition if this name is not defined we are just defining it right over here and at the end we are adding endif and when we study in detail about preprocessor derivatives in one of our future video you will get to know what is this has defined and what is this if and def in detail so for now for every header file that you are creating just create header god like this with a unique name for that particular header file so this header god will help us to prevent redeclaration of variables and functions inside this header file So for every header file just add this header god but keep in mind that you just want to provide user defined name as unique for that particular header file. So for each header file that you are creating this name must be unique. So as I did right over here you can follow the same methodology you can provide the same name of the header file like this in capital letters because C language is a case sensitive language and here in this source file. The common method is we just want to add the header file of the corresponding source file user file one dot h. So for all the user defined header files inclusion, you just want to include that file with the help of this double quotes like this. But for standard library functions, you can use this greater than less than symbol like this so for user defined header file inclusion you just want to use this double quotes like this as include of double quotes of user file one dot h like this and for standard library functions like std io std int std math etc you can use this less than and greater than symbol like this so for including standard library header files you can use this less than and greater than symbol and for including the user defined header files you can use this double quotes like this so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to write down these functions right over here that is the user defined functions right over here function 1 and function 2 inside the user defined file that we have created so i'm just copying this function declaration and I am going to paste it inside the header file as I said the declarations will be done inside the header file and regarding the definition of function I am just going to do it inside the source file as discussed. So now what it is showing is 
here in this user file one dot c, it is showing me a warning, implicitly declaring library function printf. This is because this user file one dot c is not able to find this printf function declared. It is implicitly declared because we have included this stdio.h that is the standard library header file in the main.c but we have not included in this .c file or in this .h file. So that is why it is showing me an error or warning. So I am just going to cut this and I am going to paste it or call the header on the top of user file one dot h and since we are including this user file one dot h in this user file one dot c that stdio dot h has been included and the warning has been skipped you can clearly see now it is clear in this part but here in this main dot c file it is throwing me an error not error exactly it is showing me the same warning that is implicit declaration of function 1, function 2 and printf. This is because the printf needs stdio.h and in the similar manner the function 1 and function 2 is defined in this user file1.c and declared in this user file1.h. So I want to include this user file one dot h in main dot c file for this function one and function two and since we have already included stdio dot h here in this user file one dot h we need not include it right over here in the main dot c for using this printf function right over here so i'm just going to include user file one dot h user underscore file one dot h you can see all the warnings has been skipped. So now when I run this or compile this, you can see I am getting zero errors and three warnings. I am moving to the debug view of Keel Microvision IDE. And when I run this, you can see the output is from function one, from function two, inside main. So the same output we are getting right over here, but we have declared and defined these two functions function 1 and function 2 inside a user defined file user file 1 dot c and declared it right over here in the user file 1 dot h that is the head of file. So this is how you can create as many as source files and head of files required for your project as per your application and using these kinds of source files and head of files in your project will help you to understand the program deeply and also it will increase the readability of the program. So I hope you learned how to create source file, head of file and how you can use those functions declared and defined in that user defined source file and head of file in main.c file in this video. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.